Today's video will explain the steps or phases of the V-Model. Hello, I'm James Helfrich. Often we design and develop software without quality foremost in our mind. How can we build quality into every step of the process? The V-Model is one such solution for that. This video will explain the V-Model and describe how each step relates to the other ones. So the first step of any software development process is requirement solicitation. This is a step we cannot skip. In this step, we have to understand what we're trying to build. Now, sometimes we're given the requirements as is, as a complete document ready to go. But it's far more common that the requirement solicitation process is a discovery process that goes on through the course of the project. For an example, sometimes we're assigned a product owner. In this case, the, the individual represents the spec or the requirements. And so we have to periodically query the product owner to find out what is needed. Now, the product owner doesn't often know completely what is required from the get-go, so we have to periodically revisit the product owner to figure out what is needed based on what we've built so far. The requirements could be a set of formal requirements, sort of like a legal document or SRS, or it could be a collection of user stories or scenarios or many other different things. It doesn't really matter the format the requirements are in. What does matter is that we have enough understanding of what we have to build to progress to the next step. Now, one of the main deliverables from the requirement solicitation step is an acceptance test plan. Namely, how do we know if the product is fit for use? From our initial requirement solicitation process, we're going to have a preliminary acceptance test plan. Now, note that as we revisit the requirement solicitation step again and again, our understanding of what needs to be built is going to be elaborated upon, and so our acceptance test plan is going to be added to. The important thing is to have one location where we store our complete understanding of what needs to happen for the product to be fit for use. And that place is the acceptance test plan. So after we've done some requirement solicitation, the next step is the system design. And here's where we come up with a holistic view of what our system design will look like. Here we identify our components. Are we gonna have a client, a server? Is the client gonna be desktop or mobile? Are we gonna have a, an administrator console? These major decisions are made at the system design step. Now with the understanding that our requirements list is probably not complete or correct, but rather a work in progress, so too our system design is understood to be not complete or correct, but rather a work in progress as well. However, when we make our system design, at that point in time, we make our first draft of our system test. And our system test is how we're going to do black box testing on our system. In other words, having no access to the internal workings of the system, having no understanding of the technology on which it's built, how can we find bugs? Initially, the quality assurance team is going to take this system test plan and they're going to run some manual tests on the system. Here's some input. I expect a certain output. After this initial test, however, then we're going to automate this so we can make sure that we can run through all of our system tests in a single and repeatable fashion. Now, there's a big difference between the acceptance test plan and the system test plan. Remember, the acceptance test plan is only designed to see if the system is fit for use whereas the system test plan is designed to find bugs or defects. After we've finished our system design, now we can move on to more specific design or component design. How is our individual client or how's our web server gonna work? Here's we identify as many different aspects of our component as possible. We try to identify the different classes and how they relate to each other. What functions do we need? How data is gonna pass between different parts within a single component? As we dive deeper into component design, we're going to discover new aspects about the system that we did not know before. Because remember, the software development process is not just about writing code, but it's also about learning about the technology and about the product as well. So often we have to return back up to the system design with this newfound information and adjust it, which may mean, of course, we have to adjust our system test plan or even our acceptance test plan. It is also the case often that we come into a problem we know the answer to. And so we, then we have to go all the way back up to the requirement solicitation phase to have asked the stakeholder, the client, or the product owner what exactly we need to do to move forward. Once our component design is finished, or more likely finished enough, then we come up with an integration test plan. In other words, all the different subcomponents we've identified in our component design, they're going to interrelate with each other. How can we test this interrelation? For an example, if class A and B and C within the component relate to each other closely, then we want to find a way that we can test the interrelation between those classes. And that would be our integration test plan. Now, the output of the component design is we're going to identify individual units. For an example, functions, classes, or methods that need to be built. Oftentimes, these function classes or methods are sufficiently straightforward that I don't need to design before I could just start writing code. 
It is more frequently, however, the case that at least one function or method is non-trivial, and then it would be useful to create a, a draft of that design or maybe even a prototype to make sure that we understand how it's going to work and different design options. And we call this our unit design. When we finish our unit design, we need to come up with ways to test it. And this is our unit test plan. This unit test plan consists of a bunch of test cases. Here's expected input. Here's the expected output of what we, how we expect a given function or method to work. Now, if we're going to follow the test-driven development process, then first we're going to write the unit test then we're going to write the code to make them pass. However, we could also do a traditional development methodology where we first write the code and then write the unit test to verify it. In either case, the process of unit design, unit test, and code writing is a very small window, usually about two or three minutes to create one unit test, then make it pass, and then the next one to make it pass, and so on. So we're going to go through this loop many, many different times until finally the individual unit is completely implemented as well as tested. Now that I have the unit tested, the question is, how is it going to interrelate with the rest of the program? So for an example, if I just finish class A, then I have to wait till class B and class C are finished until I can test the interrelation between class A and class B and class C. But now when this is finished and B and C catch up to A, then I can execute my integration test plan for the interrelation between those three classes. And this process continues until all the aspects of a given component are finished. And then that component is said to be signed off. Now, of course, an individual component by itself is not the complete system. When all the other components within the system are finished as well and signed off, then we can start executing our system test plan that we've created before. And of course, once all of our system tests pass, then we can see if we're fit for use and we can finally get around to the last phase of the V model process, namely the, the acceptance test. As you can imagine, executing all the phases of the V model is a group effort. It takes many different disciplines over a great deal of time to finish it. But the question remains, who does what part of the V model? For an example, the requirements solicitation process is typically not done by developers, but rather by requirements engineers, project managers, product owners, scrum masters, and people like that. The acceptance test and the system test are usually done by quality assurance engineers, Testers are software development engineers and test. These are specialists who are really good at exercising tests on systems. The remaining phases of the V model are all conducted by developers, from system design to component design, to unit design to coding, to unit testing and integration testing. This is a departure from earlier software development methodologies where quality assurance engineers assumed a larger portion of the process. Modern development teams have developers do about half the testing, all the unit testing and all the integration testing. You can learn more about the individual steps of the V model in the V model chapter of the software design textbook.